My students have been studying identity throughout the year, and they were really able to see how the cultures and traditions of the enslaved people living on Phillipsburg Manor helped those individuals preserve their identity and their home culture. My name is Jasmine Bath. I teach fifth grade. I've been teaching for seven years. What inspires me to teach about the history of enslavement, um, particularly in fifth grade, is that there are so many resources for fifth graders and elementary school students on the civil rights movement, but what doesn't exist for a lot of fifth graders is like really accurate, really thoughtful resources to teach about enslavement, and that is a super important understanding to have about why the civil rights movement happened. You can't talk about civil rights if you don't talk about Jim Crow. When you talk about Jim Crow, you have to talk about Reconstruction. These are concepts, these are cause and effects that kids need to understand. And I also think to understand like how far we have to go to reach more racial equality in the United States. The lesson that I made for Historic Hudson Valley was all about embracing the humanity of the enslaved people that were living on Phillipsburg Manor. The students had learned about enslavement and like the motivation, the profit motivation behind it. They learned about how families were separated and I really wanted to make sure that the students were also able to see like the enslaved people's humanity and their resistance and how it empowered them. What? is the problem for this family. What continues to happen to this? And then how does this show the oppression that the family faces? Turn and talk. So we focus on four videos from the People Not Property website. First video we watched was all about the traditions of the enslaved communities and their roots to American traditions today. Um, and that was kind of a shared experience where we watched the video together and we jotted our ideas about it. We made sure that for that video, we talked about how those traditions did empower enslaved people to resist their enslavement. Then I broke my class up into like six or seven small groups. They all watched different videos about their traditions and culture of enslaved people living on Phillipsburg Manor and in colonial New York. They jotted notes on a web. They took notes on a storyboard if they were learning about a story. But each group again focused on like, well, how did these people use these cultures and traditions to empower themselves? After each group watched their video and took notes, I had the groups come together to make a poster about their, like a teaching poster, a poster that would be able to, they could use to teach other students in the class about the video that they watched. And finally, once they finished their poster, we had a whole class gallery walk where we learned about each other's videos and topics using the posters. And then students shared out using their poster as a teaching tool um, so that the whole class could learn about all the traditions and parts of culture that had been featured on People Not Property. By understanding more about the history of enslavement, like you can make that more important to students.